like to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us today for the dedication of the Shirley Hazelton Wing of the Carl Johan Memorial Library. It's a pleasure to have you with us today for this special occasion. And as I look around, uh, we see some wonderful guests here today. Dr. Brodman, uh, would you raise your hand back there? It's great to have you here for this uh, dedication. And Mayor Jared Phillips. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much. Today we celebrate the generosity of an individual whose legacy will forever be remembered on this college campus, which she so deeply loved, and her wing today is being named in her honor and in her memory. And as we begin this program today, I want to introduce the folks that you'll be hearing from, and we'll get started with our program overall. Richard Valentine, president of the college. Lynn Coral, friend and classmate of Shirley Hazelton. Dylan Galden, a junior here at Culver Stockton College, and Lee Hammer, professor of English. At this particular time, it is my honor and pleasure to call forward President Valentine. Thank you, Larry. And thank all of you for being here. This is a special occasion. Uh, in many ways, it's unbelievable, and I think those of you who were here not long ago, remember what this particular uh, area looked like and so on. And, uh, it's, the transformation is, is amazing. And so as we get into the program, I just, uh, I'm so proud of this spot and, and you'll, you'll see that as we go through. Maybe uh, perhaps a little bit about the history of the library itself and then what happened, how did this particular wing come about? Well, back in 47, there was a, a certainly a greater need because student enrollment was growing that the library expand. So uh, in 1948, the library proper, which is on the other side of this wall, was built. And I can tell you there was tremendous excitement by the student body. Not so much about a library being built, but the fact that there was going to be an ice cream shop in the basement of this building. And guess what the name of that ice cream shop was going to be? Cat's Paws. That's the first time the Cat's Paws or CP came about uh, back in 1948. In the early or mid-60s, this particular wing and the wing on the other side, east and west wings, were built. And this wing was especially built for the sciences. And hence the fact that we now have this, uh, this particular wing, and, and uh, John Brodman can speak to this, um, although um, he never likes for me to put him on the spot. But uh, this was the chemistry area, and so we thought it uh, appropriate then to name this the lab. Well, just a few months ago, and I think some of you remember this, this was all divided up into lots of different rooms. And I must say, and I don't see any of the fine arts folks here, so I don't mind saying this, it was terribly cluttered. Uh -oh. Sorry, Carol. Uh, it was... Uh, uh, cluttered by uh, fine arts, props, and different kinds of things, and uh, because of a lack of space, and, and uh, so why not just take over this spot? And that's just what fine arts did. And if you know Peter Miller, you understand what I'm talking about. Well, certainly, thanks to the generous donation by the estate of Shirley Hazelton, class of '69, it provides an outstanding community study space and an amazing coffee shop today. As you will note, and um, some of you just came in and sat down, and that's great, but I, in a little bit I'd like for you to walk around and look at this space. But we have impressive study rooms with smart board technology, along with wonderful conversation areas. We also have what we would say a view that would only be seen in a magazine, and, and it's probably the best view on campus. This transformation of this wing has also provided something that I think is long overdue. Actually, we've never had accessibility through an elevator. We do have that now. And believe it or not, on this wing, we've never had restrooms. And we now have restrooms. So how exciting uh, the transformation has been. Shirley and I were in school together. She graduated a year before me. 
But I think it would go without saying that she spent a lot more time in the library than I did. <laughs> I think uh, Lynn Borrow, when she comes up to speak, she'll probably admit she spent a lot more time in the library than, than I did. But anyway, Shirley came to Carver to pursue a degree in nursing, and we did not particularly have a strong, we didn't really even have a nursing program, but we had science courses in that area. But she chose mathematics as a field of study. She was also very interested in music and the fine arts. So she sang in the choir. Um, she very much appreciated fine arts, fine arts throughout her life and in later life was involved in that as well. She was a dorm council member and that would be known today as a CA or an RA, a resident assistant. She spent her life being a supporter and a friend to higher education. Shirley's career was spent in the business office of Gasser County College in Sewell, uh, New Jersey, where she worked there for 25 years. Part of her job was coordinating scholarships for the students there, and not only did she have philanthropy here, but she had philanthropy there in establishing a very large scholarship program for those, those students of, of that college. Shirley was a member of the Mathematic Teachers Association in New Jersey, and after she retired in 2004, uh, she loved to travel, do needlework, and write computer games. She was a very caring and heartfelt woman. I'm proud that Culver Stockton College gets to honor and remember this fine lady by naming a wing after her in our library. Everything we do, and I've, you all know this, I've said this many times, everything we do here is about the student experience. And this addition to our campus does so much to enhance that student experience. Now, on a personal note, um, I want to single out uh, a couple of folks and one in particular. First of all, this would not be possible without the, the support of Janney Construction. Jeff Janney, an alum of Culver Stockton, um, we were into this, we, we thought we could really do this ourselves. We got to a point where we uh, felt like we were going to need some help. We called Jeff. Uh, Jeff was kind enough, although we didn't pay him. Uh, I don't think we overpaid him by any means, but he was kind enough to, to send a team up here to help in, in part of the framing and so on because it was it was a project that was going to have to get done by the beginning of school. And if you were here for the kickoff of our campaign, you remember that nothing really had been done other than demolition. So we thank Jeff and his crew very much for the work that they did. But I think there's another guy here, Gary Feldkamp. And Gary, where are you? Stand up here. I just want you to know that this is the guy. When you look at the crown mold, when you look at the baseboard, when you look at the wonderful woodworking that was done to prepare the counters, when you look at the counters themselves, and look at the window wedges, those are out of the old lab. And I can tell you that Gary with TLC cut each and every one of those and fit them into the window wedges as well as the counter. The work around this place, in and throughout, lighting, all kinds of things, um, was a Gary Feldkamp project, and we owe him a, a real debt of appreciation and gratitude. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Joe, I, I want to mention Joe Leeson because Joe was a part of this, and I, I may be standing on the carpet that Joe uh, put down. Is that correct, Joe? Uh, Joe did a lot of the uh, little things, but Gary uh, did the big things. But it was a, an effort, as in everything that we do on this campus, it's an effort of TLC for by our uh, folks who, who are employed here and who love this place. So again, I want to thank all of you for coming. I can't tell you how thrilled we are with this space. It, uh, it has tremendous meeting. We're going to hear uh, from Dylan in a few minutes about the meeting for the students. But uh, we thank you all for being here. Thank you.
forget, and at this time, I'd like to call forward Lynn Goral, a friend and classmate of Sherman's. Thank you very much, Lynn. And at this point in time, it's my privilege to call forward Dylan Galden, who will share some words regarding the impact that this fine <coughs> new coffee house and wing is having on the student experience. Hi, everyone. So, last week I was asked by President Valentine to come before you all and speak about what kind of impact it's had on the student population. Well, I thought long and hard about this, and this building, or this room in particular, it's extremely unique to Colbert. Most rooms, most buildings um, have a single purpose, you know, a bedroom, uh, a place to study, a place to eat. You know, that's what's nice about this room, is being a legal studies major, I'm in this building a lot, and this is a nice place where I can do anything that I need to. I can come up here and I can study, I can have meetings, I can grab some lunch. I can grab lunch and do homework, I can grab lunch and do meetings. We had, we had the CP before, but that was a different field especially compared to this room. This building has 
needed this desperately. It was a pretty boring building to be in, with the exception of the library, I'm sorry, but it was. Uh, it, it was a building that was strictly for education purposes. It was not a lot of fun to be in, and I mean, I spent my life down in the trial room every single day. It's just kind of where I lived. Um, and when I first heard about what they were doing here, I was kind of confused. I was like, what, what are they going to add? What's it going to be? What are the, like, I had a lot of expectations, and um, I can honestly say that this building, this room, the lab, has met every single expectation that you could ask for. Uh, there's been so many times that I've been up here, and I mean, I have meetings every Tuesday and Thursday, right over there under the TV on the couches. Um, we have, I'm on the mock trial team, but we have mock trial practice up here almost every other night. It's, it's provided a lot to the campus. It's provided a lot to the students. Um, it's something that we're extremely grateful for, that we're thankful, and something that we are so, just so happy it's here. Um, and probably, as President Valentine, it's nice to have bathrooms on this end of the wing. <laughs> and uh, it's a nice place to grab coffee. It seems like something small, but the fact that when you're tired, when you're working, especially in the library, and you need something just to give you that extra boost, it's nice to be able to come in here and relax, grab a cup of coffee, and my spot is right over there, sitting right out, looking right out that window. That is the number one spot that I sit most of the time. Uh, I personally, I love the lab. I am so happy and so thankful for what it's done for us. We've had so many events on campus already that have just been focused in here. We had a couple weeks ago, uh, Professor DeWard hosted the debates, the presidential debates, and this place was packed. And it was probably so much fun that it probably wouldn't have been able to have been had anywhere else on campus. But because we had it here, we had this projector we had the screen, we were able to watch as a group and you know talk about who won, what did what, or who did what, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. We've also had trivia nights in here already, so it's something that is still kind of getting its legwork to figure out that people can actually use this space for something. And uh, it's gone over extremely well with the student population, so I just want to come before you and say thank you. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Now it's my privilege to call forward Professor Lee Hammer, who will share some words on uh, the impact that it's having on faculty and teaching here in this facility. Thank you, Eric. Um, in order to give you what I think is a, uh, a proper way to understand faculty appreciation of this place, this marvelous place, I have to talk about Frank Edgar. Uh, some of you may have known Frank Edgar. Dr. Edgar was a longtime history professor, much revered, and has since gone on to the great symposium in the sky with Plato and Aristotle and others. Um, Frank was a man of many passions. Obviously, history was one of his passions, but he had a lot of passions. And at the top of the list, that little category of passions that you might call obsessions was faculty lounge. If you wanted to get Frank riled up, what you would say is faculty lounge, and immediately, metaphorically, he would grab his staff and his banner, pull down his visor, and lead, and get ready for any charge into the uh, next crusade for a faculty lounge. <laughs> I'm sorry to say he really didn't get a faculty lounge, at least not the one he wanted. Uh, a, a benevolent dean at the end of his at the uh, end of Frank's career gave him a little dingy, dirty little corner room in the basement of Johnson Hall before it was renovated. And, um, you know, it had pipes on the wall and stuff like that. But we got some old sofas and a few and a coffee table and a little table in the corner with a little tiny coffee maker that you had to make your own coffee when you came in. Frank would sit in there, I think, hoping that the dream would come, that people would walk through the door. And occasionally we, we did try to use it, but it just didn't work. But well, what I have to say is, this is where Frank, this is what he really would have wanted, because I know Frank. Um, the problem is he couldn't have envisioned it. I don't think many of us on the faculty could have envisioned it, really. Uh, I don't know whose vision is uh, responsible, but it's a good vision. Uh, by the way, Frank probably couldn't have even envisioned the day when Sharon Upchurch took down the sign on the library door that had said, no food, no drink. <laughs> By the way, I think that was the time, that was the inaugural event of Do Something Different at Cal. Um, 
But Frank couldn't have realized this. But if he were here, I know this is it. This is what he would have wanted. Because Frank was, you know, I think Frank thought of a place where faculty could get together away from the classrooms, away from the offices, and talk faculty talk, professor talk. And probably about the decline and fall of civilizations and about uh, maybe how the students of our current world do not read the great books or something like that. Um, but the thing about Frank is he loved students as well as he loved the faculty. And if he would have known a place like this, which is, I'll describe for you now what we appreciate about this. It's not just a faculty lounge, though it can be that. It's not just a student lounge, though it can be that. Most of the time it's a faculty and student lounge. And it has these beautiful classrooms where I know many, uh, I, I haven't detailed this, but I know many uh, faculty use those ones. I use the one in the corner for uh, British uh, romantic poetry. And what kind of better view is there for romantic poetry than what you see out of these windows? I'd, I'd like to just add one little thing to that. Uh, well, and uh, Dylan has talked about some of the things that go on here. We've had comedians up here. We've had uh, poetry readings. Uh, in the morning, you'll find a group of faculty who come up here to get their mandatory cup of coffee and possibly sit around and chit-chat while the coffee is doing its thing. And then uh, in the middle of the day, Harmony Magazine meets up here once a week, right out here in the middle. Uh, we have all kinds of committee meetings. We have, uh, I think Greg Bohemia told me that the, the uh, Psychology uh, Honors Society has meetings up here, and many, many more such things. But it's wonderful to walk up here and see our uh, illustrious SGA president here with the uh, people, and I can go over and tell him what I think he should be doing. So, <laughs> I just want to add one more thing. When, uh, when the human, by the way, this building is pretty much a humanities building, which means English, history, religion, philosophy. We are um, humanities and social sciences now, but uh, it's been long sort of thought of as a humanities place. One president referred to it as the place where those humanities people are with all their books. Um, one thing about humanities folks, generally speaking, is we don't have labs with our courses. You know, we don't offer Shakespeare and a Shakespeare lab, or New Testament and a New Testament lab. And so many of us, when we saw this name up here, thought, that's a science thing, this is a humanities building. But I, I'd like to suggest that we're doing something different. Now humanities has a lab, and I think that's wonderful. I'd like to refer to it as a conversation and enlightenment lab, where we uh, do the stuff we should do outside the classroom. And so I want to say that the faculty is immensely grateful uh, to the generosity of Shirley Hazleton for this fabulous place. And it, it is a superb <coughs> contribution to the way we experience learning and living here at Culver Stockton College. So thank you. Thank you very much, Lee, and helping support the vision for this. I want to point out Tony Crane with Architects. Thank you for your work on this project and uh, making this vision possible for us as well here at Culver Stockton College. At this time, I would like to call Larry and Larry Roll forward, and we are going to unveil the plaque that will be uh, placed just outside the entrance into the Hazleton Way. Thank you very much for being here today. We really appreciate this. Take care.